Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Travis T. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up today, this article was making its rounds on Twitter. Steven from Seeking Alpha essentially saying Tesla is overvalued. And it's honestly not a terrible article. He had some nice things to say about Tesla. He just thinks it's way overpriced. So I want to highlight a few key points. First up, let's keep in mind Steven's final argument of this entire article is that Tesla's share price should be around $140 per share. Using the trailing 12 months earnings per share that would give Tesla a current PE of 19 for a company growing most important metrics over 50%. And it's worth going over a few of these points because as I said, this is a well-researched article just with some fatal flaws that are tough to see at first. We also have to remember Tesla just recently turned profitable, so we're just getting started with Tesla's profitability metrics. This research is ultimately far too simplistic. To be clear, debating valuation in general is foolish as it's just a matter of how far into the future investors are willing to go to pull back those future revenues to today. Steven's entire argument is predicated on data from the past three years and he admittedly doesn't factor in insurance, energy, or FSD. Steven first combines the revenue and profitability for 12 legacy automakers to compare to Tesla because Tesla's market cap is greater than all 12 of these legacy companies combined. This is flawed though because it's not about what these automakers are doing today, but what they will be doing in the future. The thesis is that consumers will want EVs and specifically Teslas because they're just better cars and as this shift to EVs happens, Legacy Auto will struggle mightily to maintain revenue, let alone profitability. So these metrics look to the past and to understand Tesla and why it deserves the valuation, you have to look to the future. Steven says Tesla will have a hard time continuing to disrupt due to their high price points. A few quick thoughts. We know people pay up for Tesla more than any other brand. Tesla also hasn't even started disrupting the truck market yet, Cybertruck and Semi. And if any company is capable of driving down cost, it's Tesla. And toward 2030, as the supply chain picks up and 4680 production is scaled, paired with industry leading margins, Tesla will be in a position to lower prices if they needed to pull that demand lever. One of Steven's main arguments is Tesla is not a tech company because 100% of its profits come from automotive. Yes, this is true today. However, it's only true until it isn't. Tesla's software prowess and tech focus are just ticking time bombs waiting to go off to catapult Tesla's valuation higher. Full self-driving, software as a service, insurance, dojo for AI training, Optimus. Now sure, it may be a few years, but it's when, not if. And this all just ties back to the issue of how far into the future is each investor willing to go, which is why debating valuations is silly. Steven then uses data from FANG to argue that Tesla's valuations as a tech company are not justified because these FANG companies have grown revenue faster than Tesla over the past three years. This, however, totally disregards the total addressable market going forward and that these other companies are more mature than Tesla with greater scale that they can ultimately leverage right now into greater revenue growth. The real question is where will these companies growth come from in the future from here on out? Additionally, revenue growth is a poor metric for the tech debate. Making cars and building factories takes more time relative to Facebook generating more ad revenue. Of course, it's going to take Tesla a bit longer to generate more free cash flow when compared to Facebook because Tesla is in the midst of ramping to extreme scale in a capital intensive business. In the last point I wanted to touch on, Steven said there's no guarantee that Tesla will ever generate $46 billion in annual free cash flow, let alone the $68 billion in free cash flow that Google generates. While I agree there are no guarantees ever, I would say there are definitely likelihoods. Remember, Tesla generated $5 billion in free cash flow in 2021, selling less than 1 million cars. In 10 years, Tesla just confirmed they plan to sell 20 million cars per year, a simple 20x. So it's not completely this simple, but using that same ratio, that would be $100 billion in annual free cash flow when they're delivering 20 million cars a year. And this ratio does not include solving for FSD, also with no free cash flow from energy, insurance, or Optimus. So overall, like I said, not a terrible article, good research, but the problem is it's all looking in the past. And for me, I'm just pretty confident we're not gonna see $130 Tesla share price unless it's due to a stock split. Tesla released its 2021 impact report today and it is jam packed with awesome information, far too much to go through, but I do wanna highlight a few new things that we learned. 
Tesla's employee count has grown 70 fold over the past decade and in just over 10 years, Tesla has created around 100,000 direct jobs. And with Tesla aiming to produce 20 times more cars in 2030 than they did in 2021, Giga Texas and Berlin will be recruiting extensively starting this year. Tesla said interest in joining Tesla's mission is at an all time high. They had more than 3 million unique applicants globally in 2021 alone. And one of my favorites, according to Universum 2021 rankings, engineering students want to work for Tesla and SpaceX more than any other organization. And I love what they said. It doesn't matter how far ahead or far behind our technology is, what matters is the pace at which we're evolving, implementing new ideas and engineering solutions. In order to maintain our pace of innovation, we must continue to attract the best and the brightest to join our mission. As of the end of 2021, Tesla has installed almost 4 gigawatts of solar systems and cumulatively generated over 25 terawatt hours of emission-free electricity. For reference, that's more energy generated by their installations than the total energy Tesla has used to run all of its factories since it began producing the Model S in 2012, and the electricity used to power all of its vehicles in that same period combined. Here's a cool anecdote of Tesla using AI in its alien dreadnoughts or the factories. We're leveraging six years of sensor data from Giga Nevada to train an AI program to safely control 195 interconnected HVAC units, accounting for six megawatts of total electrical load. When fully loaded, the Tesla Semi should be able to achieve over 500 miles of range achieved through aerodynamics and highly efficient motors. This truck will be able to reach an efficiency of over 0.5 miles per kilowatt hour. As a reminder, Tesla is already recycling in-house and by the end of 2021, this facility achieved a production rate of over 50 tons of recycled material per week. And here's the good stuff that most people are still clueless about, Tesla going direct to the source. In 2021, Tesla procured over 95% of lithium, over 50% of cobalt, and over 30% of nickel for NCA and NCM cells directly from nine mining and chemical companies. Effectively cutting out the middlemen, reducing the ultimate cost, and enabling more responsible sourcing. As I've said before, cobalt is not going away even for Tesla. They said it's important to note we expect our absolute cobalt demand to increase over the coming years because our vehicle and cell production growth rate is forecasted to outpace the overall rate of cobalt reduction on a per cell basis. And lastly, Tesla provided this table to list all of its direct supplier relationships in the battery supply chain, which is something we'll dive into in future episodes. And speaking of, Vale has confirmed in a press release today, it has signed a long-term contract with Tesla to supply class one nickel in the US from its operations in Canada. And according to Reuters, Giga Shanghai looking to increase production to 2,600 cars per day starting May 16th, this from an internal memo. Right now, Tesla is only running one shift, but prior to the COVID shutdown, they were running three. This increase in output is said to be achieved by adding additional shift lines, and this would put Tesla on a mid 60,000 unit per month rate as of the middle of this month. You've probably all seen this lunacy by now, but just to be clear, Tesla will be doing around 5 million units per year by 2025 based on a 50% annual kager and with GM starting from a base of 457 EVs for all of 2021, the math is effectively impossible. And honestly, I won't be surprised if Mary steps down as CEO sometime prior to 2025. Just a quick reminder that yes, one day FSD will indeed be superior to human drivers. Tesla confirmed it on the Model S order page, an adjustable 17-inch display tilts left or right for gaming, movies, and more. Here we have Lucid raising prices around 13%, between ten dollars and $15,000 per vehicle. These are all base vehicle metrics. All vehicles seeing this price raise except the Lucid Air Grand Touring Performance. And could somebody please tell me what Fisker is doing? They just keep announcing all of these new vehicles and providing pictures like this without actually producing anything. This is definitely not a good sign. I don't like this at all. 
And lastly, Ford shared a memo saying that dealers will be receiving one F-150 Lightning starting in mid-May. This vehicle will serve as an on-lot demonstration unit for interested customers who want to experience and drive an F-150 Lightning. However, Ford getting pretty serious with its restrictions, saying dealers that sell this demo unit to customers too early will have serious repercussions like a hefty $25,000 fine and being blacklisted from this program in the future. Basically, these dealers will have to keep the F-150 Lightnings on the lot for at least six months. That'll do it for today. Apologies for the different and brief type of video today, but we have a lot going on at the house. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.